when people say, how are you doing? I'm like, do you have the long answer or the short answer? There was something really weird that happened when I was teaching fourth grade. There was a sentence written out on the whiteboard and I like forgot how to read. I saw the letters, but I, I couldn't read the sentence. At that point, I didn't ever think that it could be MS. They put me in for an MRI and I had like five missed calls because they found all of those lesions. There are almost a million patients with MS in the United States. There is still that fear for them that life has now just taken a different trajectory. This is now my second time meeting with Dr. Beauvais. I don't even know that it's sunk in yet. There's so much to process, so much to take in. My grandfather died of it when my mom was 16. My mom's entire memory of her father was in a wheelchair. I never expected that to be my life. It's very hard for people who don't have a condition to understand what it might be like. If she's laying down in bed, she doesn't want to be there. She's never been someone that wants to be in bed. And then I don't, I don't know what to do. Being a patient and having children to stay on top of medical care is really a burden. And for patients with MS, that can be like a part-time job, a full-time job. How do I explain this to my kids? Because the five-year-old, it's easier for her to think, oh yeah, mommy's eye's not working. Like, well, the doctors are gonna figure out what's wrong with you, mommy, and you're gonna get better. But it's like, how do you explain that maybe I will, maybe I won't? My big question is, do we know if it's relapsing remitting or could it be progressive? Do we know that at this phase? I mean, I just want to kind of know what to, like if we can figure out what to expect and what I should do. You had a relapse, okay? So it's relapsing onset MS, okay? okay? So our goal is to stabilize mm -hmm. first, kind of right. stop the madness, <laughs> and yes. then allow the nervous system to heal, okay. okay? And it can do that better when it's not having ongoing injury. It's so critical to set the right tone for a patient. The sooner you can grapple with that, the sooner you can make decisions that are gonna set you on the path to wellness. There are definitely positives. First of all, I've got you know, Andy and my dad to ask all of those questions and type all the notes. They're extremely, extremely supportive. I don't know how she feels. The better thing for me to do is just to trust that she's doing what she can when she can brace her when she's able to do things, but then when she's not, allow her to rest and recover. I've done tons of research on what to eat and I've changed my diet. It's almost like a positive thing, like, because now I really get to focus on self-care. This neurologist I'm very, very comfortable with. I feel like she's really a straight shooter. The hardest is when you don't know how it's gonna pan out, but I'm definitely very hopeful.